a few questions on my uh, setup, uh, how it works, in particular the uh, drain pipe mod. So I thought I'd make a, a quick video, probably a little bit easier than me trying to explain it on the the Facebook page. So this is my setup. Um, it was made from a discarded golf ball rack that my or a golf bag rack that my neighbor uh, gave to me. So I have my unit down below with the pump, chugger pump. Uh, up on top I have my, I built a little stand, so it's my sparge water pot. I usually have uh, my immersion heater <coughs> in there for, for heating the water up for sparge. Um, got a chugger pump on there, uh, probably kind of overkill, but I already had one, so it was cheap. Uh, the way that's set up, so I've got obviously the output on the chugger pump, hose running up. Everything's a little temporary right now, so I've just got some big binder clips on there. I'm still trying to sort out exactly how I want this set up. So the important part is the drain pipe set up inside the unit. So you can see the water's heated. I have my pump on a little uh, RF remote. You can see that's plugged in. It was like $10 on Amazon. But that way I can run my pump on a remote. And you can see it's should be circulating, but sometimes that chugger pump gets a little uh, cavitated, so we'll try it again. There we go. So the, the point of that drain pipe, right now it's obviously not filling up to the point of overflowing in that pipe, but you can see it installed. So I'm getting ready to mash in. Uh, I know like, so this is the same setup as the Robo Brew, the grandfather. Uh, there's usually a cover on that little Robo Brew grandfather. I found a uh, just a Sierra Nevada cork, fits in that guy, perfect. So I put that in when I mash in, uh, that way I don't get any grains going down the center pipe. Uh, mash in like normal, and then um, go from there. So I will go ahead and shut it off, and then I'm gonna mash in, because I can't do it with one hand holding the phone. Uh, once I'm mashed in and starting to recirculate, I'll start the video back up and show you guys where I'm at. Mashed in, you can see we got the pipe up there. Um, I put the cork in there, so as I mashed in, it wasn't a, I wasn't getting any grain down the center pipe. I, I pumped this a little bit already just to make sure everything was working so I didn't screw it up on video. But uh, So everything's working, so we've got the center drain pipe. You can see the hose up here. I've got my uh, temperature probe down inside. So now, the way this works, take your plug out. This is just a uh, $10 uh, stain, nine inch stainless steel colander off of Amazon. Uh, so that guy goes right over the top of the pipe to kind of act as a strainer. This is a, uh, I'm doing a uh, American Amber for a competition. So it's, this is a little bit over, this is right at 15 pounds of grain. So it's, it's pretty full as far as this unit goes. So I just set that, you know, the drain pipe, that uh, colander is just in there to make sure that none of the grain, the big pieces of grain come back through and go down the drain pipe. So you can set your hose over. Right now it's just a hose. I'd like to have like a, a sparge ring at some point. That'll probably be my next project. But from here, just uh, kick the pump on. So you can see now we're flowing water into the system like you would if you were recirculating. But now the point of the drain pipe is, instead of having to constantly regulate that flow, you can see now we're getting whatever excess water isn't draining through the grain. Now it goes back down to the drain pipe. So it flows back to the bottom, comes back on the pump. So that that majority of water is constantly recirculating. The bonus to that is it keeps, I found it keeps the temperature uh, much more regulated on the uh, on the mash. When you're, so you've got a layer of water. You can see, I mean, there's probably a good four or five inches sitting on top of the grain. Uh, a portion of that's going to the grain bed and then the, the rest of it's going through the drain pipe. Sorry, I was starting to fog up here a little bit. But you can see, I mean, it's, it's a decent amount of flow. So the more you can flow, the a little bit easier to keep that temperature regulated. Um, so now I just we can just let it run. This is the same concept as the the grandfather, the Robo Brew. That's the reason they have that uh, that drain pipe is they don't that way they don't have to regulate the the flow constantly. So now we can uh, just let it run. So we just let this guy run for an hour. I find you get nice clear work. This one's a little bit dark, so it's hard to see, but. Um, I'll turn the video on here a little bit farther into the mash and you can see how well the uh, the liquid drains and how clear it ends up being. Okay, see you on the next section. Minutes into the mash, I just want to show you guys how uh, how clear this is coming. Now, 
supposed to be an amber. I probably went a little bit too uh, heavy on the uh, roasted grains, and it's a little bit dark. But I don't know if you can see how good you can see the video. I mean, it's that works coming out. I mean, nice and clear. No problem. There's no grains flowing through anything. Uh, everything's cruising through pretty good. Uh, temperatures hold nice and steady where I want it. Mashing about 150. Get this one to finish out kind of dry. Uh, so it's it's going good. So it's I can put the lid on this thing and just let it run. I don't have to screw with it. I don't have to dig with it for you know until the end of the match. I got the timer on for another 50 minutes or so, and then uh, we'll go to boil. My mash. So you can see now things are sitting. I pulled the uh, the drain pipe up a little bit just to make sure I don't get anything in the way. Uh, put my handle back on, and yes, the handle comes off. Just pry it apart and it comes right out. So now I'm all ready to mash or to, to sparge out. You can see the level going down a little bit by itself. Um, just pull basket back off. It goes back in our pan. I'll try to do this with one hand here. So now we can just let this guy sparge out drain out uh i'll come back when uh that's all drained off when it's pretty much drained you can hear i got a pretty good runoff going in there so i'm just gonna we'll let it sit there and run i'll show you my little trick that i use to figure out the volume uh so you don't have to peek in there and try to get to the uh the inside marks okay mashed out or sparged out i guess i should say so i want to show you guys my uh extremely high tech uh solution for finding that water without having to lift it up and look at the volume especially now that we know the volume's off. So I just took a uh, you know, dollar fifty, two dollar from the homebrew shop uh, plastic racking cane. I had measured off um, you know one to four gallons on here. I know I'm not gonna get more than that from the spar the initial sparge runoff. So then I can just take this guy, just stick it down inside, and I cap the end so it holds it when I pull it up. I can read my levels. So, see I'm just short of three gallons of uh, water on the first runoff. I usually want about six and a half before boil. I usually lose a little over half a gallon during the boil, so that'll put me at six, which is usually, you know, five and a half, five and three quarters into the fermenter. You can see I capped that, so we're all ran off. You can see I capped the drain pipe, pulled it up a little bit. Um, put the cap on there just to make sure we don't get any grains going through. Uh, but other than that, now I'm going to go ahead and um, add my sparge water. Uh, I'm not going to video that because I'm just going to pour it in with a pitcher. I've got my water hot in here, and I've got my um, my treatments, my brewing salts in there. So I'm just going to pour it off. I know I need about three and a half gallons. I'll just measure it out, dump it right on the top, and just let it run off. Okay, and I'll come back when we're ready to boil. Ash is done, and or uh, sparge is done. Ended up with... Uh, on the mark, it's just shy of six and a half, uh, but we, I know I measured this morning uh, and measured it out, and it looks like we're about half a gallon short. So really, that's probably more, that's probably closer to almost seven gallons. Uh, so I did my measurement, uh, or I did my gravity reading pre-boil and hit my numbers. Uh, I was predicted to hit six and a half gallons at 1062. I hit almost seven gallons at 1062. Uh, which means that I'm actually about about 78% efficient. So not bad for uh, for this little unit, for the way it runs off. I think before I was a little bit lower efficiency. So almost 80% almost efficiency, probably do a little bit of tweaks and probably get in that 80% efficiency range on that. So pretty cool for this little unit. So it's uh, heating up now. We're 180 degrees. It's um, been heating up for probably uh, 30 minutes or so. Normally, once I start the first runoff, I will uh, kick the, the heater up and, and let it run. So, probably got about another 20, 30 minutes before we're at boil. So, I'm going to go get my hops ready and start cleaning up. All right, I will uh, update when we get close to running off. Done with our boil. Uh, now, I'm down to um, do my whirlpool. So, I'm doing a pretty big dry hop on the whirlpool. So, this guy's... Uh, Going around now, I just dumped in a couple ounces of hops. I'm going to let that spin for about 15 minutes. I don't know if you can see. I started uh, right up just below 6.5 gallons. Uh, I'm at, uh, I'd say, 5 and 3 quarter gallons. So I'd say probably somewhere in the neighborhood, like 0.6 gallons boil off uh, for a solid hour boil. Uh, you can see from the residue up, I almost had a boil over. That was maybe the first time I've ever done that. 
Um, but it's uh, it's going well. So we'll see how it goes at the end of the at the end of the brew.